We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Good morning, tubers. Madam Roy back once again. Back to you on the 29th of December, 2018, a Saturday. I'm trying to get some work done, but Milo has other plans. Don't you, buddy? Do you have other plans? You're already trying to type stuff out on my keyboard. I was trying to um, reshare some of my older videos, ones you guys have told me you wanted to see, but have been buried in the uh, in my queue for a long time. Share them on Facebook, but Milo is not going to let me do that. You such a sweetie. Yes, you are. Look at this. You are so lazy, Mr. Milo. Yeah. I tried so hard. I've thrown him off here a couple of times. I really don't want him on the desk like this because you can see he moves everything around. But how can you say no to this pretty kitty face? You purring? Doing, buddy. You gonna give me the paw? You gonna give me that cute little paw? Yeah, I think you are. He's so adorable when he's like this, and you just can't get mad at him. I mean, look at this little stink pots. Now, shake paw. It's one thing I've taught my cats: shake paw, shake paw, Milo. All right, Milo, get some rest. I don't know what we're gonna get you today, tubers, but. You got your little dose of Milo. Talk to you guys in a few minutes. Go ahead and see what Baxter's up to. He's been a very friendly boy today. Haven't you, buddy? Mm-hmm. More than usual. Must not be a full moon. They go crazy when it's a full moon, usually. Don't you, Mr. Baxter? You gonna purr? He sees, he sees the phone, and he's not happy about that, but... He's tolerating it. He has the most soulful eyes of any cat I have ever seen. Baby. Psst, 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 psst. Look at you. You're going to be bashful. He's a good boy, though. Well, we actually have to give Milo another bath because he's been itching a lot lately. So I think he's got some dry skin. And, uh, yeah, I don't want him to have to suffer with that because I notice him scratching a lot again. So we're going to give him a bath. Hopefully the um, soap that we use is working properly. And I'll show you what it is. If you guys have any uh, pets, this seems to work very well. This is the Century Prescriptions. It says, uh, adds luster and groomability to your pet's coat, rich in coconut uh, conditioners. And that's actually what helps uh, moisturize their skin. Because I think Milo gets really dry skin this time of year, especially because we have forced air heating. So it's actually not just him, it's us too. There are the ingredients right there. You guys, I'm not even going to try to pronounce those, but we got to get to giving him the bath. You guys can see me right here. I'm doing like a Tyler video using the mirror to show you guys myself. Getting a little bit thinner. If I go sideways, you can see... Not much left, and what's left is pretty firm. All right, Troopers, I'm going to go ahead and pause the vlog. We'll see what the rest day brings, and I'll talk to you guys on the flip side. All right, Troopers, so back in the van. It's about 1130. I need to head over to Dollar Tree to pick up a few things. Wow. Van, I haven't run it in a little while, so it's, um, it's not all that happy right now. I think the brakes were... Uh, rust it over a little bit again and they were sticking so I kind of give it a little extra gas to break everything loose of course when you drive a different vehicle like I do you know the LeSabre for a while it can feel different when you go back to driving a uh, a big vehicle like this so oh my goodness what a morning spent the whole morning cleaning the house top to bottom you know after you have guests things get dirty um dad thankfully I want to thank my dad so much he is going to put in my um driver's side window motor and regulator on the 2000 Buick LeSabre. Pretty much the one and only problem that that vehicle has. So he's going to take care of it. I was going to be there to watch him do it, but unfortunately I'm just running out of time. Um, I have a job to do this afternoon. 
and I spent pretty much the whole morning after we got back from eating cleaning the house. So, oh man, I tell you, I, I, I long for the days when I was a kid. Things were so much easier. Didn't have to do anything. You just go to school, go home, do your homework, then go out and play and, and pretty much enjoy the rest of the day. Now, when you're an adult, you're a working person, it's a lot harder. And I know a lot of you guys out there know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, Eric was telling me that he's having some uh, headaches where he's working right now. I'm not going to get into any specifics, but I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know how people can do that 9 to 5 um, regular jobs like that. I personally could not do that again. I've put myself through that so many times. I've had so many horrible bosses that I'm just, I'm done with it. My nerves are so frayed. And that's why I work for myself because I'm my own boss. I can set my own hours, set my own time schedule and things get done. Now, do does being your own boss make things easier? No, actually the opposite. Believe it or not, I probably put more hours in doing working for myself than I ever did working for somebody else. But it's more satisfying at the end of the day um, even though I've worked a 12, 13, 14 hour day, I go home, I, you know, at the end of the day, I go to sleep, I sleep well, and I know that I'm doing something that matters and something that makes me happy because I'm going to be honest with you, every single job I had, I don't care if it was when I was working at Sonic, working at Best Buy on the Geek Squad, um, all those jobs were soul sucking. In other words, I was selling my soul out for a paycheck every single week. And I just never want to put myself in that situation again. It's um, it's not something that I want to do, and it's not something that I can mentally handle again. It's just, there's so many jerks out there, and I'm sorry to kind of go on a rant now, but I've had so many bad experiences doing that that I find the only thing to do is to be an entrepreneur like I am now. Now, do I have all my eggs in one basket? No, I do a lot of different things. I have the YouTube channel, and that helps pay some of the bills, and I always appreciate that with you guys. You know, you watch it, you watch the ads, you help me raise some revenue, and then, of course, I'm a computer tech. I also do some computer consulting work um, and a few other odds and ends, so... You guys are always asking me, Matt, what do you do for a living? Well, that's basically it. I hope you guys, uh, that uh, suffices you guys for a little while. I'm going to go ahead and pause the vlog. I think we're going to get to Dollar Tree in a few minutes, um, as long as there isn't any traffic. Sometimes it backs up near the firehouse because they do drills, um, fire drills, and they close the road off temporarily. And on a nice day like this, because it's 64 degrees in the middle of winter right now, I would not be surprised if they were out doing it. Let's see. I'll turn you guys around and show you what I'm talking about. So if you look on the right here, this is our local firehouse, and thankfully they're not doing it, but a lot of times they'll have the fire engines right out front and right, right there on the side, and they'll actually be blocking the road. They practice on the building, um, basically trying to put out fires. They get the fire hoses out, and they can actually block the road for up to five or, well, I'd say five to 15 minutes legally. So I guess we looked out there. You can see the weather is beautiful. Very few high thin clouds, 63 degrees. A marked improvement other over last night when it was pouring rain, albeit it was still pretty warm out. It was about 65 last night. But I'm going to pause the vlog. We'll see what the rest day brings. Um, don't know if I'm getting anything at the thrift stores, but I'm always hopeful. Talk to you guys on the flip side. All right, tubers, just left Dollar Tree. They still have not had a chance to stock up yet, but did find a couple little items. Um, figured I'd do a little uh, haul video. First thing is these driver's choice shop towels. Now these are always great to have if you're in your car, whatever it is. These are great for checking your oil, um, wiping up messes. Like if you have kids and they inadvertently spill your coffee, this does a great job. I mean, they're nothing super special. You don't want to wipe your face with them because they're really rough, but six of them for a dollar, great deal. Next, my local Dollar Tree got a whole bunch of DVDs and Blu-rays in, and I didn't really need much of anything, but I thought this was interesting. This is three of the best of the Lassie show, and these are the ones with Timmy, not Jeff. Um, the three that are on here are The Rocking Chair from 1958, Peace Patrol, and Lassie at the Grand Canyon. So I figured that was I do remember Lassie at the Grand Canyon. They used to play that one a heck of a lot um, on TV Land back in the day. And only one more item. As I said before, there really wasn't too many good things at the Dollar Tree. 
this is one of those funny oddities that they have, like right at the checkout stand, the impulse buying items, if you will. These are Animals Funny Face Coasters. Check that out. I mean, come on, how can you not pick those up? Let me go ahead and try to open these real quick, because I want to show you what these actually look like. I have to use my key to do it, because they don't have like an easy open for these. There we go. Got to use your strength. Ah, whoa, they're going everywhere. All right, so you get five of them. So the first one appears to be some type of cat. And they're double-sided, too. So we have some type of cat there. Pig on that side. Oink, oink, oink. Oink, 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 oink. <laughs> we have a dog or a werewolf, maybe. Uh, we got a zebra right there. We have, I'm positive that that's a guinea pig, like 99% positive. We have a bird, probably an eagle of some type. We have the one that I actually saw, which I believe is a goat, looks like a goat's mouth. And then, I don't know, maybe a fox? What do you think? You guys will have to tell me, I'm thinking probably a fox. Then last but not least, we have your common household felinus catus, or your domestic house cat. And, oh, we do have one more, and that would be some type of ape or a monkey. So I thought these were kind of cute. It would be nice to put these out uh, during a party, maybe get some laughs. I don't know. What do you guys think? That's all I have for pickups right now. I do need to run into Roses, and I'll probably run into the thrift store real quick. But we'll see what the rest of the day brings, and I'll talk to you guys on the flip side. All right, Tuber, so I'm back home. Dad's very kindly working on my uh, car, replacing the window motor and regulator because I would be clueless on how to do this. So he wanted to show you guys something. What was it you were going to tell him? Uh, I was going to show that uh, I looked on the internet on YouTube to see how to take off the door panels. It's always easier looking first rather, you know, read the directions, you know. So I did. And this apparently is probably the beginning of the model. So they changed it a little bit. And it was different than having the YouTube. In the YouTube, they had me taking off two screws. But on this model, you have to snap all the snaps off and then lift up. Mm -hmm. But I tried doing that anyway, and I couldn't do it, so I had to force it off. So I have to uh, uh, fix a plastic piece with a screw. Isn't that crazy? Right. And probably what happened was, because this is a 2000 model, they probably changed it the year after. Cause I think the one we were looking at was like a 2001 or two. Well, it was good. The video said 2000 to 205, but and they, they must have had a different design when they first started, and they found out it didn't work, and they changed it. And this is an early model for this is a uh, was what? a 99. It was it was made in I think uh, November of 99. Yeah. So. Yeah. So Our first run, and they realized it's something. Right. So these are all the door clips here. And what was the plastic piece you said that broke? Well, it's a uh, metal retainer that that goes on the door like this. Oh, okay. And then you have to like lift up in order to unhook it. But it'll be like this. Watch. It'll be like when it works. It's supposed to be like so. It's supposed to slide the panel down, which is going to be a real problem to try to do. Yeah. But that's why they got rid of it. But anyway, we'll have to slide in like that. But uh, It's a pain in the butt. But we're getting it done, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the vlog, um, and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, Tuber, so here's the old window motor and regulator, and you can see that the grease, especially around where the window would go up and down, the glide rail is really, really um, worn out. You can see it's kind of yellowed. And the worst thing was with these, they went to a cable system that actually moved it up and down. And that was the Achilles heel of these. These cables, and you can kind of see the cable right there. It looks very reminiscent of um, like a brake cable you'd find on a bike. And down here, you can see it even more. And these were really known to bind up. And I can actually see right here where it was starting to get pinched. So... This is just one of GM's bad ideas in 2000. Not saying that the whole the Sabre line is bad. They're not. But this is the one design idea that really didn't work out for them. Just thought I'd show you that. I'm going to go in. I'm going to get a little something to eat. A little more coffee. We'll see what the rest day brings. And I'll talk to you guys 
on the flip side. All right, tubers, we're about to put the door panel back on, and we actually had to fix this bracket. This bracket had, what, plastic clips plastic, on it? Uh, rivets. Plastic. plastic rivets in it that broke when we took it off. So what we're doing, we're actually drilling out the little plastic holes that are right there, or you little, tower, little right there. tower it's called. And what we're doing is we're putting a washer and a screw in each of them, basically just to reattach this bracket onto the door panel. And this actually fits on the actual door itself. And that helps hold the middle piece in where the armrest is. So I think we're actually going to luck out. Basically, all we had to do was take this drill here and drill in the hole right, right there. Center. Right center. Yeah. Yep, right dead center. Now, you have to be careful because these are really delicate. Yeah. Very easy to break. I actually had to drill this thing twice. And then, basically, you just stick the washer up there, put the screw in, kind of like that, and we're done. So, we kind of lucked out. We weren't sure if we were able to fix this, but... Looks like it's going to work, right? Professional repair. Yep, professional repair. See, Dad's teaching me. I'm, I'm not great, but I'm learning. All right, tubers, standing in front of my Buick, and there was a couple of things that I needed to get for this. One I just replaced was the regular intake air filter, and that's really easy to do. You just remove these two clips, pull this off, and then it's uh, right in there. You pull it out. This one was not too bad. This looked like it had been done uh, maybe in the past year or so. It's a Fram. It was getting dirty. It was just about time to uh, change it. But I'll tell you the one that was really bad was the cabin air filter. And if you guys have never changed a cabin air filter in the Buicks, it's really easy. Basically, all you do is pull this little cover off under the um, shield for the wiper motor and everything. And it sits right there. Now, the worst part of this is getting it in without crimping it. It's very hard to do that. But if you do it, you can kind of just pull up in the middle and it'll go back in the shape. But take a look at the one that was in there. Isn't that disgusting? I will bet you that that hadn't been changed in about four or five years, maybe even longer than that. I wonder if there's any names on it, but... You hold that up to the sun, you can't see anything through that. And look at all the junk that was falling out of there. Look at the dead moths and all the other bugs, grass. And that was what I was breathing in. So one thing, if you have a vehicle that has a cabin air filter, make sure you change that out at least, I think they recommend every 18 months. I do it about every two years. And then it's just really easy. This goes right back on like this. And that's it. Job done. Talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, tubers, that's going to do it for today. It's about quarter to four. We've had a really long day. Dad and I worked on the car. We cleaned the house. We had to bathe the cat again. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Hope you guys were enjoying these. Please continue to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.